Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, talking about aura colors that just don't get enough play. We're going to talk about all those nuanced aura colors. Then we're going to go into some frequently asked questions that you all gave us. And finally, we are going to do some Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family pet readings and people readings. But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right, so the reason why this came about, um, as many of you know, I do the discussion groups. Yes. And we have these discussion groups pretty much running almost every night of the week. And, you know, we talk about all things virtual and auras, and we talk about you a lot and <laughs> all, you know, everything like that. But what I find in these groups is a, a lot of times they ask, you know, they, they've been telling me that, you know, some of the colors, we, we, we never talk about them. Yes. And, you know, I got to come up with creative things to tell them as to why. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, and I basically kind of just tell them, well, you know, the largest percentage of the audience has like is purple or blue or maybe indigo or I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you've got the five main. Right. So like we can't really do oh, an episode dedicated just to, let's say, green koi's, which we're going to get to in a minute, which right. is like kind of very rare. So like, you know, there's only like maybe seven of you that are green koi's <laughs> listening right now. So, but anyway... So I figured, fine, this is the time. You know what? I've got it in so many times, in so many of these groups, and so many people have messaged me that saying, you know, could you please go into some of these rarer colors? It's and, fascinating, though. Yeah. It, no, it is. And it is fascinating. Yeah. And I think, like, even if you're not these aura colors, hearing about them are going to, it's going to interest you. And you're going to want to meet somebody who's like this. And you might even think you know somebody like this, which would be really cool. Also, these types of colors, if you're not resonating with, I guess, the five main aura colors, like one of these combo colors might resonate with you better. But let's start with the Turks. The turquoises. Turquoises. The Turks. We call them the Turks. We lovingly call them the Turks. Turks. Because we have a little Turk. (laughs) We do. Who lives with us, Abby, (laughs) our seven-year-old turquoise aura. And I do feel bad because the poor turquoises are always like, can you talk about us? (laughs) I mean, it is the most requested thing I get. It is. Can you please talk (laughs) more about turquoise? Can you please talk about us? And okay, generally speaking... Well, overall, when I read turquoise auras, let me tell you, you're never the same. You're always different. You're always different no matter what. And this is this is because the nature of the turquoise is to be very absorbent and reflective all the time. In the past, my big metaphor was for talking about turquoise auras was it's like looking at the water. If you go to a very still pond and you look upon it, you see yourself, but that's not you. You're seeing a reflection of you. And when you're around a turquoise aura, a lot of times they act as that still water. And the people all around them will always see a reflection of themselves in a turquoise. And the turquoise can get very confused. Am I the reflection that I'm holding for somebody No, you're not. You're the power behind that. You're the ability to do that. And that is super complex and it's very deep and extremely layered. And it means different things for each people. And the way that it shows up into your life can be so incredibly nuanced that it's hard to even find it. Because again, with turquoises, a lot of times with their energy is it's so subtle and it dissolves into place. It's hard to catch. It's hard to catch where you're doing this thing. Yeah. So turquoises, they've been getting, I guess on the podcast, is a lot of that. Like, well, you're absorbent and reflective. Yes. And here, well, here's the thing with the turquoises. And actually I do, I do have a question for you. When I, now I do try to hone my skills and I do try to guess people's auras now and I have I usually have the most trouble when it comes to someone being turquoise Mm -hmm. like it's hardest the hard like if someone's purple blue or purple indigo I'm pretty good at getting that you know I can get a yellow blue now from a yellow purple yeah I can get a red purple from a red blue but when it comes to turquoises I I do struggle figuring that out but I also think they struggle themselves and yeah the number one thing I get uh in these groups when people don't know their color they the turquoises and I don't know what your what your answer is going to be. This think that they're indigo, okay. so a lot of times they think they're indigo. Yeah. Do you do you, does that make sense to you? Yeah, indigos and turquoises share the absorbency, and they're both. If I was going to have some sort of scale to measure how boundaries can be trespassed, they both have 
they're on the strongest side of both those capabilities. So they, but turquoises have a more ability to shut down and, and take themselves away. Where did I say no? Indigo, sorry, indigos have more of an ability to put up a wall and take themselves away. Indigos have a really great ability to prefer their own company. And they do have their own inside thoughts that are very firm and strong and consistent. Turquoises tend to change and evolve more their thinking and their their sense of identity. In a way, they're just a little bit more soul identified than they are ego identified than I think any of the other aura colors. And as a soul... It's harder to attach on to things in the 3D world. So turquoises tend to kind of change up their likes and their wants and their needs and their goals and their things. And it, and they can, you know, the thing with turquoises is they really believe themselves in the moment. Okay. Like a hundred percent. Whereas other aura colors can have a little more self doubt, if that makes sense. Like when a turquoise is like, this is a job for me, this is a career, gung ho, 100%. Like they can really throw themselves into something and you cannot talk to them otherwise. They get oh. very one track. All right, let me ask you, let me just kind of go a little but, bit further. It, but here. it is more of a vibe. Yeah, yeah. The turquoise is. So if you're indigo and you're an aware indigo, because I know there's some people that are not aware. Yeah. Like they're unaware empaths or whatever, they, mm-hmm. they, they're not there yet. But if you're an aware indigo, and I know that you can do this now. Maybe you used to not be able to do yeah, this. Yeah, I've gotten better at it. Where, you know, when you feel something, you now can tell that it's the other person and not you. Yes. So, like, that that was a big jump for you, right? Yes. When, oh, yeah. Yeah. So now, like, if you're feeling something, you're, let's say sad. Right. And you're like, wait a second. I'm not feeling sad because I'm sad. I'm feeling right. sad because this person is going through something and I'm feeling that I'm picking up their energy. Yes. But you're aware of that. You weren't always. Right. Would a turquoise maybe not be so aware of that and the turquoise would be more like still thinking, oh, I am, like, and maybe they even believe it. That's that, so, that's their, their sadness. You just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Okay. Other aura colors like indigos have a better sense of what their default emotions are. Okay. And turquoises do not have a sense of what their default emotions are. Yeah, that you just said. That's exactly what it is. I've come a long way. I bow to you. That is very good. <laughs> I've come a real long way. You can be All the right. turquoise whisperer now. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I am the indigo whisperer. Maybe I could become the turquoise because well, Abby's turquoise. Well, I and- think God gave me a turquoise child because she helps me so much yeah. on a child level, like understand how that, you know, works into adults. and whatnot. But also turquoises are a vibe. They really are a vibe. And once you kind of under you're around enough turquoises, you can kind of be like, "Oop, nope, that's the turquoise vibe." And it's just something they're very kind of floaty and airy, okay. and, and they kind of look at you a while. And sometimes they'll say something, and you're like, "Whoa, okay, that I gotta sit with that, like or whatever." So it, it's interesting with the turquoises. All right. So the other day, I um, you know, was looking at a person, getting their their colors for them, and. I, you know, I showed it to you to see if I, because I, yeah. I had no idea what it was. I was trying right. to guess, and I showed you the person. Usually, if you don't know, it's a turquoise or a blue. Yeah, right. right. And you told me it was that the person was a green quoise. Right. And I looked at you funny for a second because this is one like <laughs> I've never heard. You know, I, I I thought I've heard it all, but I didn't. Ne- I really don't remember hearing green quoise. So what is what is green quoise? So. A green quoise is a turquoise aura with kind of like, I mean, it looks like that color. Like if you smushed green and turquoise together, like that's the color it looks like. Okay. And so they have attributes of green and turquoise in them. I guess their characteristics are kind of big in between spirituality and science. So they love spirituality, they love science, and they love finding the bridges between them. So these are people who are very adept at taking something that is scientific and kind of going a little further into it and seeing where it could be spiritual too. So these could be like people who are really into geology and then they go into, oh, you know, and then there's these, I don't know what I'm talking about, but like, they could, <laughs> okay. oh, I really like geology and, you know, I really like magnetic poles of different stones and these are different places where in, you know, on the globe where you can go and there's great magnets and things and that helps you with this. Da, 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 da. So they like will link things together into kind of spiritual or pseudoscience behavior. Um, the green coys loves finding magic in the mundane. 
So a gre- just like greens are really great at self-occupying, green quizzes are great at self-occupying and then bringing you into it. So they're the ones that are going to be a little bit more into gardening. They're the ones that are going to be talking to their plants a bit more. They love uh, nature, grounding, very much into finding themselves through nature is a green quiz thing to do. Yeah. But I mean, I guess they see kind of the microcosm of the universe in the tiniest places. What I mean is that is they can go outside in their backyard and feel like they've been everywhere already. They can look at one flower and kind of translate that to what's going on cosmically. They're really good at taking the small and blasting it out to the big and vice versa. So they'll find huge universes in very small spaces, which is really beautiful and inspiring. And, and they're really cool people to be around. Sometimes they're really into, like, like astrology is a good example of something. Like green coises can be really into astrology because it's planets and the cosmos and then they make it spiritual, you know? So it's kind of that vibe. Um, but I can't talk about green coise auras without talking about fairy vibes. And I've never talked about that before. Fairy vibes? Fairy vibes. Like a fairy in the garden, like a far- like, like a yeah, garden like fairy? like a forest fairy. Like a, forest a gar- fairy? like a garden fairy. There's lots of different types well, of fairies. Abby, Abby's turquoise and she loves fairies. Loves fairies. Okay. Yeah. So that, okay. So, okay. So I got to talk about fairy vibes because sometimes green coise people, and this is how you can tell if somebody's a green coise. By the way, if anybody, this, I hope this is nobody's first episode they're ever listening to. Because <laughs> yeah, we're talking about this fairies is now. like our deep. This is like our deep dive episode. So this, anyways, and I just <laughs> I'm talking about oh, fairies. I we're know. talking about fairies. Sometimes you'll know it's a green coy's aura if they give you a fairy vibe. What do I mean by that? They're kind of fun. They're a little quirky, a little mischievous. They kind of hang around the out. They're like outliers in society a little bit, but they're fine with that. They definitely treat people the way they need to be treated and have no guilt. So if someone's like a jerk, they're like, I'm going to tr- treat you right back like that. They're, they have sort of a, and maybe it's the green in them. They have sort of a boundary that way. And they'll have fun with it too. They, like I said, they're very nature connected, super magical. Like they really do believe in magic, but they'll assign science to it. So it's kind of like a fairy thing, but fairies in nature, I know he's laughing at me. Yeah, fairies in nature, <laughs> you know, just throughout the eons of time that right. people attributed, I guess, seasons changing and stuff like that to them. Um, they're very wise. And a big thing with fairy vibe people, which are usually, tur- which I always see with green coises, ageless. You could be talking to a 60 year old woman or a 16 year old girl or boy or man, like whatever. And they have this kind of ageless quality to them. Like when they're young, they feel like an old soul. When they're old, they feel like a young a young soul who's an old soul. So it's kind of like this ageless thing. They can be a little self-serving. That's their, I guess, toxic trait, which we all have one, you know. So okay. they're just, they can be a little bit like, mm, not for me, because they're green coins. They got that green in them. Okay. So basically what we're <laughs> saying here is Tinkerbell is a green coin. Yeah. Tinkerbell, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that makes sense. Yeah. It's yeah. just green. Yeah. If somebody... Reminds you a bit of a fairy. Right. (laughs) Or a pixie or whatever word you want. Wood nymph. I don't know. (laughs) There's like so many words for it. Okay. Chances are they're probably green coys. Okay. How? Okay. (laughs) And I just have to ask that. How often? I don't do, think do Abby's see, a green coise. She's not a green coise. No, okay. she's more a blue coise. How often do you see a green coise out there in the wild? I mean, do, do you not see them often. often? Not often. But here's the deal. When I teach this stuff, I have to keep it general so that people don't think I'm crazy. So, you, so people can understand it immediately. So talk about green coise, like you said, there's not a lot of them. Right. But I still think it's interesting to hear about, but there's not a lot. But if you've been having a hard time, maybe you don't resonate with being green or you don't resonate with being turquoise, but green coise just sounded pretty cool to you, you're probably a green coise. Okay. It's like you don't quite resonate with turquoise and I don't quite resonate with green, but man, green coise, that's, yeah, that's me. That's me. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, you're, you're losing me here a little bit. You know? I lost. You. I mean, I know we did sound baths last week and stuff like that, yeah. but all right, you know, all right. All right blue, what about blue coys? Blue coys. So blue coys is like blue and turquoise. So it's just like a very light, filmy. It's like if you took blue and you put it with turquoise, kind of like the Aegean Sea or something, you know, like that very beautiful, like deep blue yet aqua y color. Anyways, they are really big into um, they're very emotional people and usually their heart like blue coys people 
how are they different from blues? Blues have more of an established identity again. The blue coys, they're not all the way turquoise, so they can kind of lean on the blue. And most likely they're doing something blue in their life. Like maybe they're a nurse or a teacher or a therapist or they're working in some sort of field like that. Um, where they're doing blue people things, but they but it's interesting because I'll see almost like their aura is evaporating at the edges, like all the time. So the problem with blue coys is, is they're doing these things, but they still don't have an exact pinpoint on themselves or their identity or what they like or, or who they are. They very much can blur who they are when they're around other people. They don't, conform themselves at all they can act a little robotic sometimes because they're so in their own head but they don't conform their behaviors to fit in so how they're different from more tur- from more blue people i mean is blues will do kind of the socially acceptable things that everyone else is doing because they're so attuned to it blue quizzes won't so they can act different or say things different or maybe be a little awkward socially just because they're not always here nor there. So they're kind of floaty. I don't know if that makes sense, but blue quizzes are like, they're very much healers. And I always get mermaid vibes when I meet a blue quiz person. Okay. Mermaid so vibes. Mermaid vibes. Round of mermaids. Like, like, like Ariel? Yeah. Okay. Well, not really. Not really. Kind of more like the mermaids from literature or like the old school mermaids that were a little scarier. Like them. Okay. In a good way. Okay. In a good way. All right. All okay. Right. And I'll tell you why. All right. So, and I lose you? No. Like, uh, no. I'm out here. I'm listening. So, the big thing with mermaids is they have like this duality vibe to them. So, they can be both really sensitive and they can be also very much for themselves. So, that's the th- same thing with blue quizzes. They can do things exactly for themselves and they can also be very present and sensitive at the same time. Uh, kind of independent. Usually, blue quizzes are very independent, very free spirited. Like I said, they don't. They don't want to conform to societal standards, so they tend to do what makes them happy and then be like later, like, why didn't everybody follow me or join me or think that was not okay? They do have kind of a feminine vibe, whether they're men or women. They have, I guess, what society calls a feminine vibe, whatever you want to, I guess, the way that I see that is they will use their body they'll use their energy they'll use their words they kind of pull people into their world a bit and so people get very attracted to them and they they don't quite know why so i'll see blue and you know who's a blue coys um well she's kind she's turquoise but she has mermaid vibes to me it's addison ray your favorite tiktoker scott she is my favorite tiktoker (laughs) she follows me by the way yeah she follows me yeah does she I have like seven followers and she's one of them. Oh, wow. She always gives me mermaid vibes. So they're very enchanting. Okay. Blue quizzes. Okay. So blue quizzes are kind of that mermaid vibe thing. Mermaid. All right. All right. So basically we've been talking about fairies and mermaids. Well, somebody reminds you of that. Yeah. Like they kind of got this kind of watery, more mermaidy kind of yeah. vibe. They're, they're harder to pinpoint, but All that. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> I know people now are going to come be like, am I, you know, they might be wondering now, my green quiz, blue quiz, whatever. I just got a DM from the fairy godmother from Cinderella asking me if she's a blue koi. We got a couple ads, and when we come back, we're going to do some more colors, especially blue to go. It is summer, and this weather can be hard on your skin. The last thing you want to do is have some dry skin when you're wearing less clothes. Well, dewy summer skin isn't just for your face. With the right products, you can get a full body glow. Osea skincare and body products help get your skin ready for every summer Look, you know, summer's the perfect time to get outdoors and get back in touch with nature, but you just want to make sure that you don't get dry with all that time outside. I personally love the body oil. It is part of my daily routine. It keeps my skin healthy, smooth, nourished, and glowing. It's seaweed infused. And I just love all the Osea products. I use so many now in my routine, but the but the body oil I love putting on after my shower and I just have that glow all day and I feel really good. So you can experience radiant summer skin with Osea's Andaria LJ body oil. Keep skin soft and glowing with Andaria LJ, Acai Pulp, and 
Babu Su seed oil, a rich, never greasy, luxurious body oil that's fragrant with sunny citrus and notes of sweet passion fruit. You can try Andaria about. Ba- Andaria LJ Body Oil in Osea's Total Body Glow Trio Kit. This kit is fabulous. It includes the body oil, a moisturizing body scrub, and a plant-based body brush. Sweep away dead skin cells, then hydrate for incredibly soft, glowing skin all summer long. Like all of Osea's products, the Total Body Glow Trio is safe clean, responsibly sourced, vegan, cruelty-free, and powered by the sea. So find your new skincare and body care favorites at OseaMalibu.com and get a special discount just for our listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with promo code KYA. You'll get free samples with every order and orders over $50 get free shipping. You're going to want it all. Go to Osea, O-S-E-A, Malibu.com, promo code KYA. I'm an aura reader. I'm a podcaster. I'm a mother. I'm a cat mom. (laughs) I'm a unique combination of all the things I do in my life. And you too are a unique mashup of all your favorite things. And there's a multitude of ways to express yourself. So celebrate all that you are and explore who you can be with customizable prescription glasses from Pear Eyewear. Let me tell you, the experience with Pear Eyewear is so easy. I got a clear frame. I absolutely loved it. And let me tell you the best thing. Their customer service is so helpful. When I screwed up something on my end, let me tell you how patient and kind and helpful they were. It was no problem. They were so polite and it was the easiest thing I've ever done. So you can change up your look in a snap. Pair Eyewear's base frame and magnetic top frame combination makes it easy to switch up your style. Base frame start at just $60. I got a clear pair, including prescription, including the prescription lenses. There are hundreds of top frame designs to match whatever base frame you choose. It's that easy. It's like a different pair of glasses all the time. Change or, or you just you can wear it without the base pair too. Um, without the interchangeable top. Change your glasses like you change your clothes. Get started by choosing your base frame with options for the square, from the square to the cat eye. Every frame comes in six different colorways, including classic bat, black to the remixed blue tortoise. Then pick your top frames and build a collection to match your personality. They're fiercely individual. They lead by example. This company is just, you get the choice in this eyewear industry. It keeps... Um, prices at a minimum. They forge their own way and they make all their designs and their looks in-house. So you'll get this high quality eyewear at a fraction of the price. So, and also for every pair purchased, Pair provides glasses and vision care for children around the world. So get glasses as unique as you are. One pair, infinite style, starting at just $60. Go to PairEyewear.com slash KYA for 15% off your first purchase. That's 15% off at Pair. P-A-I-R-I com slash K-Y-A. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Well, you know, I, during the ads, I, I was really thinking about the, the uh, green coises and the blue coises. And it, Petro Hanchar, I don't know if you remember this, one <laughs> okay. Halloween had on a mermaid costume. Oh, wow. You remember that, right? Yeah. Does that make him... A blue quiz. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to rethink some things now. Blue quiz vibes. All, All right. right. The other thing that I get a lot, or we've been getting a lot of, is blue to go and then blue slash indigo. Yeah. Okay. So like some people, and this was in the uh, Thursday night group, Bridget's group. Uh, they were asking me, is there a difference between blue to go or can you be blue and indigo at the same time? Okay. And I wasn't. I, honestly, I couldn't really answer the question. Uh, I know you can answer yeah, the question, but I can't. Yeah, this is hard because there's not one answer. It really depends on you. Okay. So every single person I read, each one of you carries your color differently. Um, again, I try to generalize it on here so that you can read. The, really, the purpose of all of this is for you to take a a bigger step within yourself and ask yourself these questions. Where do I feel comfortable? Where don't I? Why? And if the colors help you do that, that's great. But the thing with blue to go, blue and indigo, they're, honestly, there's so many different ways to wear them. So sometimes people are straight up indigo. Sometimes people are straight up blue. Sometimes people are blue to go, which just to me, the way that it looks 
is almost like, how do I explain this? Um, if you had a really deep, deep blue color with flashes of a lighter blue inside of it, that's what it looks like to me. But then some people are indigo and then they'll switch on their blue for some situations. I don't see the indigo and then they'll go back to indigo for other situations. And those people are like blue and indigo and then usually another color too. So, so they're authentically blue and indigo. Yeah, but I wouldn't even call it like call a tricolor. It. Okay. I yes, would, and that was what they were trying yeah, to get Yeah, I would probably still call them blue digos. It's just okay. the way that they work. So like some blue digos are both indigo and blue at the same time all the time. And some blue to goes are just blue and indigo at different times throughout the day or life or whatever. And it's just normal for them to switch one on in some places and then turn that off and then and go indigo in other places and then turn that off. Okay. But then some people are just like in a, an authentic blue and that's and that feels that, different. That, that feels different. Too. And that feels different. And and those people feel exhausted and they feel burned out. Like if you're indigo and you're wearing an authentic blue. Or for any color, really, when you feel when you're wearing an authentic blue as any color, you feel extremely tired and just over it and saturated from people's feelings to the point where you never get a break of that feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's like inauthentic blue. Um, but yeah, does that answer it? It, it yeah, really depends. Honestly, I think so. Every time I read somebody, Who's blue or indigo or blue to go? They carrying it differently. They carry it differently, and that's why you really have to measure yourself and gauge yourself and be like, okay, but there's not a, one answer for that because those colors inherently themselves, just like turquoise, in a way, do all these colors, all these blues have so many variations, and just what I see, the hues definitely match up to personality traits and how you handle things and what you let in and what you and what you process or not. So it kind of depends on it correlates back to those things. Okay. I mean, yes. And it also with, with the color sometimes, and you know, we can't, you know, you try to get to as many people as you can to tell them their colors. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you give them these like very, you know, quick confirms or oh, whatever yeah. and you do it. But when you're, when, and when you're doing that, it's not the same as when you're actually reading the person, no. like sitting down with them for 40 <laughs> no, minutes or 20 no. minutes or even 10 minutes. No. You know, so when you, then when you get into that energy, really deep into their energy yeah. for that, like, longer session, then you can probably tell maybe even more what the different nuances are. And it was then then the colors kind of even fade away, I assume. Like it doesn't even matter anymore. Colors were always just the door I walked through. Okay. And the only time I mean, re, if you've had a reading with me, the only I'll start with the colors like the first few minutes. But they show me um, a map and a symbol of what we're gonna be talking about. That, aren't, that isn't about colors. There's, they show me patterns. They show me emotions. They show me trauma. They show me how you work. They're a map. So I'll, for and, and they show me patterns that you might not even understand are affecting you. Yeah. So for example, I was just doing a reading. And this is why it's fresh in my memory because it was recent for a young girl. And she had this wonderful family and her whole life, and I saw this in her colors, she was taught to basically like absorb their emotions and not stand out and not rock the boat because she truly didn't ever want them to feel unsuccessful or feel like they did anything wrong or anything like that. So because she loved them so much, she would absorb all their stuff and it was all subconscious and she never... And she'd alter her behavior for that. And she was actually having a hard time with a work situation because she was coming up to a point in life where she had to make some choices and they were going to rock a boat. And it was like a a big thing in her, in her aura was, listen, like this is stuff that you feel that the whole world won't, will feel unsuccessful if you make a change or do things that normal people do. That's just something that you learned it, you know, I saw it in her colors, something that you learned as a kid to do with your colors, but that's not what those colors are for. Meanwhile, she had a whole situation with her future in-laws family because they were doing this thing too, where they were making her absorb all her feelings, but they didn't have the nice intentions that her parents had. So her in-laws, her future in-laws were, she was absorbing all this stuff. Oh, I'm supposed to call. Oh, I'm supposed to do this. Oh, I'm supposed to do that. Oh, I'm supposed to make this connection. Oh, I'm supposed to do that all the time. But 
even though she was taught through her colors to absorb other people's stuff and alter her behavior for it, what she had to learn was you have to choose who you do that for. And just... And it wasn't even about the colors. I just explained this completely without even telling you her colors. But that's what the colors showed me at the beginning. So it doesn't even matter what her colors were. Correct. And I started this whole thing with colors because that's just what I see around people. That's just the door I walk through. And it isn't, it's, it's fun and it's interesting and it's, it's awesome to talk about. I love talking about it. I'm an aura freak. I love talking about it. But it's so much deeper than that. So yes, if I do a quick color confirm, like yellow, purple, I mean, I could sit down with four, for 40 minutes with you right. and really explain to you what the heck that means and how it plays out for you and how your yellow, purple is different than this person's yellow, purple. Because... I always say this. It's kind of like a perfume or a sweater. If I wear it and you wear it, but it's the same thing, we're going to look different in it. And that's just how it is with auras or energy too. Right. Okay. That, yeah. That, okay. That's fantastic. And I just, I just want to add to that, which is something I also get a lot and you get a lot too, is like sometimes it, in, with these quick confirms, you might tell someone, let's say they're yellow, blue, yeah. right? But then, you know, they come back and they say maybe, you know, yeah, I get it. I might be yellow, blue. But I also feel that I might have some purple in there. Now, here's what I mean. I believe that they possibly could have at some point had some purple in there. Yeah. I mean, the one that comes to mind is someone that's, I think, had many, many readings with you. She's been with us for a very long time. And you've always read her as yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Every time, yellow, blue. And then I think the the last time through like some childhood photos and things like that, you saw a little crack in there and you saw some purple in there. But it took you... You know, many times of reading her and really delving into her energy to actually find that purple that you yeah. said could possibly be there. Or, That's or, why I asked for childhood pictures. Yeah. Now, I didn't always used to ask for childhood True. pictures. And sometimes when I just see somebody, like if I just see you out, I'm looking at you today. Right. Um, Yellow, blue. But like, that's why I now ask for childhood photos. Yeah. I. Because that's where I can really see you. Right. And then the difference between you as a kid and you now with the colors and, and how it looks is there's like so much there. Yeah. And it, yeah. And that's something kind of uh, newer that you've been doing, trying to get into those mm-hmm. childhood photos. Yeah. I love the childhood photos. Everyone now. I tell to send a photo. Yeah. Now and the new thing is I love, I love send me your animal, your pets too, right. because like they tell me all sorts of different stuff. So yeah, it's just different ways to yeah. see you. It's different ways to see you. Um, than where you are now, it's kind of a bigger scope right. and Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and at the end of the day, you know, you know yourself as well. Oh, so yeah. So you don't need, you know, yes, it's amazing for you to, to confirm them. But, yeah, it's fun. You know, if you think you're yellow blue and you might have had purple in there at some point, then then you did. Yeah. I mean, that's how for I For sure. You know yourself the best. best. Right. You know yourself the best. Sometimes in our reading, people give me a picture of their dad and I'll be like, I see like yellow green, but I also see uh, blue. Is he yellow or green? Um, what do you think? Because you know, <laughs> especially if you know the colors, because you know him better than I do. I see yellow and green. Yeah. I could spend 10 more minutes of your reading talking about him, but what do you think? You know, because, uh, and then sometimes it's like, so does he work a green? Is he a, is he, <laughs> that's why I love when people who listen to the podcast actually get readings. I'm like, listen, does he do yellow stuff in his green job? And they're like, oh yeah, he does accounting at an engineering firm. I'm like, got it. Okay. He's probably green, you know, like right, that. Right. So <laughs> it's just funny when people get it, but you can wear like a bunch of colors and they're not yours. Right. That's why tip pro tip, get in touch with your inner child. Really think about, try to get back into your mentality as a kid. What'd you like to do? Try to remember a happy memory. What was going on in your head? What were you excited about? What weren't you worried about? What were you worried about? Try to go there and see what aura colors that correlates to. Okay. Because it, that's a great way to really find out exactly what you are. Okay. So again, it, it's within you to do this. Yeah. You, have, you have the ability. And that's yes. what we always try to teach on this podcast, that everything comes in from you within you. You can read yourself. You can read yourself. Yes. Exactly. You're the, and you're the medium, one of our... Best episodes. Yeah, when were... someone passes, you're the medium. Right. 100%. All right, la- last combo I want to do here before we break. Mm. This combo we never talk about. I, know. We, I, I don't even think, you know, I can't even think of anyone, but yeah. someone the other day I met was this combo. They A green purple woman. Yes, and I should talk more about green purple women. Mm. It's hard because in our society, they get squashed and their green gets turned into yellow. I just read somebody the other day, because I'm doing these readings for Benjamin Moore, um, I don't know, like affiliates and things like that. And there was like a green, there was a green purple woman. I'm like, oh, but she was wearing, 
she was wearing yellow, but okay. it was so stuck on her that. But I, I made them. I made them send me all their childhood photos because these people don't follow the podcast, so they probably think we're like I'm crazy or whatever. <laughs> right. But she loved it. Like she totally got it. Like she got the whole yellow thing and everything. And she said, "I always was into growing up. I was always I always wanted to work for myself, and I always had a vision. And they always told me it wasn't possible. And she got like stuck into um, events and planning, and that so she got pushed into a yellow world." And now she's uh, trying to, well, she's not trying. She's in the midst of opening up her own interior design firm, which is very more green, you know, like more of a company kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, green, purple women, what are their characteristics? Well, green women tend, I mean, they love to learn. They're very independent. They're amazing at resourcefulness is the green woman's thing. I don't know how to do it. You bet you bet better believe I'm not asking anybody to teach me how. I can do that myself. They're very good communicators. They are not into drama. If they hear drama, they're like they either peace out or they're like let's try to resolve it. They get over things. They do not hold a grudge. They're used to being the only girl at work, basically. Um they're very academic. They love to read, you know, green people things are sometimes general. They love nature the green purple combo i'll see this in entertainment production um but because they're women and society can have a harder time accepting the green purple woman they usually are doing it in ways where they don't have a lot of support so they're going to have a media production thing and it's just them doing it or they're going to have some sort of interior design company and it's just them doing it or they're in an art they like architecture but it's just ah, i had to make my own firm like that instead of because they're purple too so they don't like to be told what to do or work for other people so they are so good at being trailblazers the green purple women that they don't even sit for a second and think about any sort of victimization in that they're just like that's the way it is because they're green so like that's the way it is i'm a woman i just best do it myself instead of kiss anyone's feet don't feel like doing that and they just make their own way so a lot of times with green purple women they don't have time to coddle or hold hands or sit there and wallow in anybody else's stuff let alone their own they're just getting busy doing the next thing i mean alicia keys is a green purple i can probably think of other ones too but she's like the first one that comes to mind mind. yeah really really smart like really brilliant picks up things quick i don't know much about alicia keys but i feel like she's very um yeah, like very self-managed. Okay. All right. We, oh, we have a couple ads, and then when we come back, we're going to do some frequently asked questions. I'm always looking, especially most most recently, to try to nurture and heal myself through what I put in my body. Well, now is the time to seek wellness, joy, and abundance in all areas of your life, starting with what you eat. With Saqqara, you can get nutrient-dense meals, snacks, and supplements that nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste or quality. Saqqara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Saqqara gives you all the tools you need to transform your life with their organic, ready-to-eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. Their nutritionally designed chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant-rich ingredients, helping Boost your energy. Let me tell you, they really do boost your energy. Support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings. They do that too. And get your skin glowing. Plus it's all delivered right to your door, ready to eat. And you know what? It tastes really good. Sakara's functional plant-rich wellness essentials help you create a body you love living in. From their best-selling metabolism super powder to the foundation, their daily supplement packs, Sakara's products are designed to support your wellness goals anytime, anywhere. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash KYA and enter code KYA at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash KYA to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash KYA. It is summer. What does that mean? Bored children. <laughs> okay. And little passports has been. Such a savior in my home. I have a 13-year-old and a 7-year-old. And let me tell you, it is like a Hallmark greeting card 
when the little passports comes, they sit down together, they play nicely and quietly and so sweetly, and they do it for hours. When was the last time you were doing something that was so fun you lost track of time? When you're a kid, the right activity can help you find a completely new world to lose yourself in. And you can help your child find the fun with Little Passports. Little Passports offers globally inspired, award-winning kits filled with hands-on activities, games, and stories, all designed to spark curiosity and imagination among young adventurers and science. Each month, Little Passports will send a kit packed with play bits based activities, interactive crafts, puzzles, games, and stories to help kids have fun while they learn about the world around them. Whether building a solar-powered robot, did it, creating a Spanish mosaic, or playing with animal friends in the Serengeti, did that too. Kids ages 3 to 10 will love learning with little passports. Each kit contains activities that are perfect for their age and match their interests. Although I'll tell you, just because I have a 7-year-old and a 13-year-old, they both loved each other's age packets. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of for everybody too. And Little Passports makes the perfect gifts for parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, godparents and educators. If you don't know what to get a kid, please just send them Little Passports. They'll be happy. Their parents will be too. Choose from month to month, six month or 12 month subscriptions, whichever is right for you. And you can stop anytime. Share the world with your little explorers with Little Passports. There's always something new to discover. And for listeners of the show, Little Passports is offering new customers 20% off when you go to Little passports.com slash aura that's 20 percent off when you go to littlepassports.com slash aura that is littlepassports.com slash aura hey scotty hey guys oh look who's outside our door again hunter stockton jr the fourth who is this guy he came up in the aura communication episode he's killing a, it in the 3d you know i think he's a green coice He's does constantly, this person even exist? He, yes, he does. <laughs> just like Petro Honchar does. He is, you know, he changes cars. He changes luxury cars and then shows them to oh me. Oh, my gosh. You know, now he has a Rolls Royce. Wow. Last week he had a Bentley. Got it. All right. Let's do some frequently asked questions. Okay. All right. I'll go first here. All right. So these, we, we asked the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family on Facebook. What, you know, tell us what comes up. We actually even said Questions that are not are pop- popular, just questions that you any might question. have. Any question you have. Yes. So here we go. So many. Stephanie Z writes, so you don't like your aura. Hmm. And a lot, and we get this all the time. Oh, People yeah. that they just don't like their colors. Yes. And, she, and I just want to say she's not attacking any aura color here. She just. It's her own personal her thing. Her own personal thing. Okay. So she gives the example that she's a confirmed pink purple <laughs> as a child. <laughs> right. But now she is blue purple. Okay. I never, and then she writes, I never thought I'd be blue and I don't want to be. Yeah. She don't want to be blue. P.S. This is not an attack on blues. <laughs> this <laughs> is hard it. to admit. You have to say I, this to the blues. Right. You have to and say it's that very to blue of her to say that. Right. Because a lot it. of blues could be upset right now. Yes. And I feel right now the turquoises are upset because we're not talking about them anymore. So <laughs> they thought they were going to get the whole episode. But okay. So this is very hard to admit. They got mermaids <laughs> and they got fairies. Fairy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> she doesn't want to offend anyone, but this is her truth. She doesn't like her blue purple. Hey, well, that's probably because she was pink as a kid. Yes. So if you don't, well, I mean, there could be various reasons for you not enjoying your aura color. One could be you were put down a lot for it growing up. Another one could be somebody in your family also has it who wasn't very nice to you and you can kind of see yourself in them and them in you here and there, but you're not them and they're not you. It's okay. Just because like, I see this a lot. Like, let's say for example, you and your mom have this horrible relationship and you're both yellow, okay? Just because you both like the kitchen cleaned a certain way or you're the ones who like to take over the laundry in the house doesn't mean you're the same as her. It just means that those are your yellow traits and she has them too. There's something called intention. So that could be a reason why you don't like your aura color. Um, Again, it could be because you had a different aura color as a child and feeling uncomfortable with the aura color you have now is an indication that you need to go back and really think about and reflect and, and recapture that the parts of you that were squashed okay. that for her, that's what it yeah. sounds like. Right. And, it, and we do get this a lot. A lot of people don't like their colors. Yeah. I have it to love my colors. I love being a red. You blue. have to love yourself. Yeah. Every aura color is the best aura color to be when you embrace yourself and you love yourself. You know, I used to hate being purple. I hated it. I really was down on myself for it. I didn't enjoy it. And when I would let it out, I'd let it out in self-destructive ways, almost as kind of a double back to like, see, yeah, 
yeah, you don't like who you are. Exactly. Look at what it brings you. But when I started loving myself more and paying attention to myself, my purple comes out in the healthy, good ways. And, and I like that. All right. All right. What do you think? Okay. So here's mine. Susan E. writes, and this is a deep one and it's really good. I like this. How do we reconcile thinking? Everyone has a soul contract with all the suffering in the world. Thinking about things like abject poverty, sexual abuse, murder, war. I know this is a rough question, but it is the one that comes to my mind the most often. I also wonder how to think that what people want can be manifested for those in these situations as well. All right. So here's the thing. I don't think and, and this is where I'm different from maybe other spiritual, I don't know, people, people, okay. <laughs> okay. And spiritual community members. I don't feel that anybody comes to this earth to be abused. I feel like we, like our soul contract does not cover other people hurting us. I think that that's a thing that a lot of spiritual people or people, I don't like the message out there that if somebody is getting abused, they chose that. Absolutely. Is that a thing? Yeah. That can be a thing. Oh my I don't want to start getting red here. I know. That can't that can be a <laughs> thing. People tell that to people? Well I mean I don't want to That I mean, is something I that is something in some circles. Yeah. That is not the Mystic Michaela spiritual family no, circle. No, no, no. And like any therapist or anything like that would be like, exactly. <laughs> you know, you don't choose okay. to be abused. All right. At all. And if that happens to you, you weren't your angel self, your higher self wasn't like, mm, we needed that to happen so that this could happen. Or No, somebody did that to you and that was their crap and that's what they did to you and that has nothing to do with you and you did not need that in any way. It, it, did you survive it? Yes. Did you learn from it? Yeah, because you had to. Are you healing from it? Absolutely, you can heal from it, but it doesn't mean that it was necessary. Like it also, I don't believe that our soul contracts include getting abused in any sort of way um, or being poor or being, I don't know, mistreated or anything like that. I really don't. I feel like our soul contracts are more general. We're going to learn this. We're going to learn compassion. We're going to learn empathy. We're going to make this connection right with mom or I don't know, something like that. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on that. And then, and then you get plopped into this 3D world and it's just kind of like, who knows where you end up really? And based on the context you're put in, you, you go for the, for the more, you know, your general objective. Just like, you know, I'm a teacher, right? And you are too. What were lesson plan objectives? Okay, a lesson, that's how I always think of soul contract objectives. <laughs> okay. When I would write a lesson plan for Spanish, it would be something like um, <laughs> students will be able to speak in another language other than their own. Students will be able to ask someone's name in a language other than their own. And I would write right. L O T E, language other than their own, you know, lot or something. Right. So that is the same thing as your spiritual contract, contract objective. Soul will be able to extract compassion from difficult circumstances. Soul will be able to find pathways to healing in a variety of challenges. So it's not soul will be sexually abused by this person and learn this, this, this. No, okay. not at all. Does that make sense? Yes. And okay. I, the reason why I'm a little quiet on this one is because I'm trying to keep my red down. That I did not know that this existed. <laughs> yeah. That spiritual people tell yes. this to Some other people, people. Yeah. That they chose it. Okay. Then, and well, if, yeah. If someone ever tells you that, just this is Scotty advice here. Just leave. Yeah. All right. The next one I have is from Aubrey H. And she writes. How important is the order of your colors? We get this all the time. Oh, I yeah. get this all the time. You get this all the time. She said it even comes up a lot in the group, and they've actually asked me this question. And I wasn't sure. I, di- I didn't know if, like, if you tell someone they're indigo purple or they're purple indigo, if it really matters. So yeah, she, that's her question. It is does. It, is there a difference between <laughs> if you say to someone, hey, you're yellow blue or blue yellow? Yeah, I'll usually say the color that's first and most. Um, it's not all there. So sometimes like a yellow blue person, I'll see all yellow and then a little blue, or if they're all blue and a little yellow, I'll say blue, yellow. Okay. I always thought you, see, I always thought maybe that you led with the, um, non-empathy color. Like like you never call me blue, red. You always call me red, blue. Cause you are red, blue. Oh yeah. (laughs) So there's a difference between, okay. So there is a difference. So what would, okay. So all right, actually I'm curious now myself. So I know I'm a red, blue. Right. Love being a red, blue. I'm like, (laughs) Stephanie, (laughs) um, 
Who's the but it was blue. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, So what's a blue red then? So that would be somebody who's more blue with just like less red. Yeah. Yeah. Not it doesn't like your aura isn't split down the middle. It's kind of like this smoky thing around you ish that usually is sometimes you're half and half. Sometimes it merges. Sometimes it's more split up. Sometimes it's all one color and just a little bit of another. It kind of just depends. Again. It's not a one size fits all thing. So in my quick confirms, sometimes I'll if definitely if I see one color more, I'll always give you. That's just how I talk in okay. heart emojis. So you would just tell them if they were much more blue than yellow, you say I'm blue. You take <laughs> like, oh yellow. you're blue yellow. You would just say yellow. yellow blue. Yeah, like Harry. I just did like a, an Elite Daily article about Harry and Meghan, and Harry's blue purple and Meghan's purple blue. Like she's just so okay. purple with like her blues to the side. She reserves it, and Harry's so blue, and his purple's like very scattered. So okay, so I, I guess it does matter. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. It I, does because I've always said I'm red blue. You know, I've never said I'm blue red. But there's got to be times where I was more blue than red. Yeah. Like all, you know, that was a lot when I was sure, teaching. Sure, yeah. I mean, but like, you always called me red blue. Well, so. you can change it up. Yeah. You can flip flop depending on the day. All right, Aubrey. I guess I was wrong. All right. So Jen <laughs> asks. Jen G asks. Scott Firester is always trying to absorb green. I would like to know if you all could have a different aura for today, what would you choose and why? I liked that one. Okay. So, yes. And let, let me just explain this. I love being red-blue. Mm-hmm. I do not want to be green. Okay. I just want to be green for like a day. Okay. And get stuff done. And just get some green stuff yeah. done. Like, I want to be green for that day, create an app where it says this, <laughs> this, and that. Yes. And then I just want to give the green right back to where it came from. <laughs> So I don't really want to be green. I want to be my colors. But yes, I would like to take, you know, have like a time where I could take that green. Like all of a sudden and you're... figure out the tech stuff. That's what I would use it yeah, for. Yeah, we're like so tech. bad with I'm the so tech I'm so bad stuff. with tech. No, we both are. Yeah. We, we, one of us needs to be green for a day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, I need to be green for a day. If I could pick a color to authentically be for a day, it would be yellow. Because I Just wish, to organize everything? Yeah. And just like with marketing or like visuals or just like my own processes, I feel like if I had green, I feel like if I had yellow energy for one day, all of a sudden, like the world would just open up and I'd be like, oh my God, like what were you doing and why were you doing it that way? I could organize all the pantries better and the linen closets. I could organize the house. I could organize um, the business better. I could organize everything better. All right. There it is. All right. We have (laughs) wild grains. And then when we come back... We're going to do some pet readings, and I think we have a person where people yeah. readings too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Scotty, we're talking about wild grain. I Okay, wild grain. <laughs> I feel like I am my most authentic self when I'm eating wild grain. I'm, I'm being totally honest here. I love everything. The sourdough bread, the croissants, every single thing, the pasta. It's so good. It's amazing. It's like the it's, best box to get, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like everyone in the family gets so irrationally happy that when it, we open it. And I love their story. It all started with a husband and a wife and a newborn kid. And it was during the pandemic. And they were, they're from Europe originally. And they could not find the same healthy bread options here that they did back home. So they started this company. So here's the deal. Remember how fat was bad in the 90s and now it's now it's okay again just like that there's good fats and bad fats and there's good carbs and bad carbs enter wild grain my friends with their slow fermentation and clean ingredients bread is back get ready to be a carbivore without the guilt start loving bread again with the clean ingredients and delicious simplicity of wild grain wild grain is the first bake from frozen box for artisanal bread plus they have amazing rolls pastries and even handmade pastas wild grain uses only clean ingredients such as unbleached and non-gmo flour and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's better for you and tastes better than anything you can find in a grocery store and that is true plus for every new member wild grain donates six meals to the greater boston food bank they've donated over 120,000 meals so far so here's how it works sign up then choose which type of box you want to receive and how often then wild grain delivers for a free box of breads grain pastas and pastries with easy to follow instructions every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less traveling freezer already stocked no problem it's easy to reschedule skip or cancel hungry already i know you are for a limited time you can get 30 dollars off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash kya to start your subscription you heard me free croissants 
in every box and thirty dollars off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash kya that's wildgrain.com slash kya or you can use promo code kya at checkout hey scotty hey guys Okay, so we are going to take some Mystic Michaela spiritual family members from the Facebook page and just randomly give them aura readings. And then I'm going to go right into some pet readings from, we have a thread on there that says the best thread ever of all the Mystic Michaela spiritual family pets. Okay. All right. So let me, let me start. So this was a post on the Mystic Michaela spiritual family page and it came from Nessie. And I thought this was interesting because we're doing frequently asked questions and This is also a very common thing that happens. All right, so she writes, question for the group. Does anyone else have the hardest time figuring out their aura color? Am I alone in this predicament? I love the KYA podcast. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. I listen intently to every episode. That's a lot of work. Even even better. (laughs) But after every new episode, I walk away thinking I'm a completely different color than I did when listening to the episode before. Okay. Crying face. So far, I know I'm not red, green, or pink. Right. She doesn't think she's red, green, or pink. She's crossed those out. But that's about it. I've even done the aura bingo cards, and it was a tie between four different aura colors. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I feel crazy, and now slightly like I have multiple personality disorder. (laughs) If you feel like this too, did you ever find out what color you you are and how? Okay, so, well, Nessie, you're going to find out what color you are. Yeah. here's Here's the thing. Usually, the typical response to that is that, you know, and people in the group who are aura explainers, yes. you know, all our listeners now are pretty much aura explainers. Yes, you all are. Usually it's like a blue color, we think. Yes. Statistically speaking, you're blue. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> fell for the, I love the KYA podcast. So right. after she wrote that and she listens to every episode, my blue started coming out. You can kiss up to Scott. It gets you places. There, yeah, there's ways to do it. <laughs> And usually it's the blues and the indigos that figure it out. Right. So I, you know, I have a 27% accuracy rate. (laughs) And I looked at her photo and to me it looked like it was going to be purple blue, possibly purple indigo. So I went with purple blue. I know why she's confused. So, oh, I totally stalked your Facebook, Nessie. And... (laughs) (laughs) Totally went creeper on you. And yeah, so I can see why you're confused. You're definitely purple. All right. It's very strong. It's very vibrant. It comes through... I mean, every picture you have, it's different. Sometimes I feel like you're a little ashamed of it, so you put it away. So then when it comes out, it's very strong and very uh, sporadic. So I feel like it'll come out, make its mark, and then you'll put it away again for a while, almost like as a short battery life or something, and then you put it away. And you're also blue. It's a little blue to go because in some of your pictures, you got some indigo shades going on. So this is a good example, back to the whole blue indigo blue to go thing i would say that you're blue and then indigo but i would still call that blue to go just for my own sanity and everybody else's but i can see sometimes you're blue and sometimes you're indigo and you're probably indigo more alone and with people that you're really close and connected with and more blue when you're out in public and dealing with people okay yeah all right well my percentage of getting things correct just went up to 28 percent. that's wonderful i got it, I got it right yeah, yeah. that's good all right, so at, at the time, this is at the time of the writing. I don't know if more comments are going to come in after the taping of this. But there were also people in the comments that were writing, yeah, I'm having the same problem. I've listened to all the episodes <laughs> right. and I can't figure it out myself. <laughs> right. So I, you know, I quickly threw, if I miss someone, I apologize. But I found three people that wrote comments that they also have been trying. At that time, at the time of at, our recording. At the time of the recording, right? right. So if you did write it after, then I wouldn't have even seen it. But yes. Uh, so I found three, and let's tell them their colors as well. All so right. we have Casey Ann, who also wrote on this thread. Okay. Do you have her picture? I do. So I also, Casey, I stalked your Facebook okay. as well. And you're also very blue. It's kind of like a light blue in some of your pictures. Like, you only have a couple pictures up here. But it's a little light blue. has some yellow elements to it. So I would say, like, it's a- this is why it's hard for you guys to pinpoint your colors, too. They're, they're different. And they don't fit a mold. So, but it is blue. It's a lighter blue. It has a bit of a yellow sparkle in there. So you're mostly blue with a little yellow sparkle. So if you're thinking like, I don't resonate with yellow, that's not me, I'm not super duper organized, yeah, that that would make sense because you're not super duper yellow. Like the yellow for you comes in in little moments or inspired, you get it together days, and then mostly you're blue. Okay. Yeah. All right, another person that wrote on that thread was Ramona J. She was also having problems 
figuring out her colors. So Ramona, great. I had a great stalker fest on her Facebook <laughs> because she had a picture of herself as a kid. Oh, perfect. So this is great. So as a kid, she's pink and blue. And pink and blue babies are just the sweetest little things. Like, oh, I'll go show you a picture of her. Aww, you just want to that, smush her. Yeah. Like, so cute. All right, so she's she's so cute. She is very cute. So she's pink and blue, but now she's <laughs> pink and blue with yellow. So with Ramona, you got the pink thing. I feel like you understand that you're pink. Maybe you don't. Maybe you consider this more your the parts of you that aren't working. Actually, work them harder. Work that pink harder. As a pink, I see it in you. You're super joyful. You really have fun in life. Um, you're blue, too. You got a really big heart. There is yellow, though. It's a little inauthentic. So I feel like you're just trying to be a little bit more organized that you are. I can see you maybe absorbing it from other people in your life. I feel like you're just trying to maybe yellow out the pink a bit. Pink and purples. I'm sorry, pink and blues, which I feel like you authentically are. Pink and blues can feel a little bit disorganized, very happy in the moment, and not always super duper motivated to do things outside of their own joy bubble. And I feel like you definitely try to motivate yourself to do things outside of your joy bubble and you really try to make a life out of what you love, which is great. But um, but yeah, just notice the yellow and what it's for. Maybe it's a little tool to get your life going, but not who you are. Okay. And the last one I found from that thread who also was having trouble with their colors, was Serena S. Yes. Tricolor. If you are a tricolor, and she's yellow, blue, and purple, if you're a tricolor, you will also have a hard time figuring out your color. It's just because, yeah, you feel like everything because everything just resonates with you. I guess a thing with I noticed with tricolors is they're so up for anything. Like tricolors are like, oh, Want to eat here? Yeah, cool. Want to rock climb? Yeah, totally. Want to, I don't know, not rock climb? Yeah, that's good too. Like, like, like they they try anything. They're usually really in a great mood about it. Everything's a great idea, but it's very hard to find your aura color when you're a tricolor. But yeah, Serena's a tricolor. Okay. All right. So, all right. Hopefully that helps the four of them. All right. Let's move on to, I think, what people love. They just love the pet readings. They love the pet this is, We always get this as one of the most favorite parts of the, of the podcast. So we have a few pets that we selected. All right. Let's see. We're going to start with... Yeah. All right. Let's start with Clifford. So Amy G writes, Clifford, wish I had seen this earlier. I think maybe she got onto the post a little later yes. on. With a purple heart. And there is Clifford the dog. Well... I did a pet reading episode. I definitely recommend, if you didn't listen to that one, please go listen to it because I really, I spent 45 minutes, I think, talking about how animals talk to me. (laughs) And it's going to make a lot of sense when I start talking about Clifford. Clifford, Amy, takes care of you. The vibe I get from Clifford, they don't talk. It's just like a vibe, but it's very truthful. The feeling I get from Clifford is he just handles it. He, you know... Animals are direct and they're not judgmental, but he's kind of showing me you don't always have it together. And he takes, he's picking up a lot of slack for you, whether you know it or not. He watches out for you. He lets you know when it's time to do things. He gives you jobs if you're anxious. He is basically charged with you in this lifetime. He loves it. It's just he's very smart and he would be very insulted and wouldn't even think it's an option for him not to join you places. So that really is confusing to him. And when you go places without him, he finds it extremely like offensive and rude. I mean, he's just, he's very, he understands he's a dog, but he's such a a human vibe. And he just has this extreme protective alpha vibe over Amy. That's what I get on them. It's really funny. Okay. I mean, I could not (laughs) get any of that from that photo. At best, I would say maybe the sun's in his eyes and he's tired. <laughs> no, no, I get – and I also get like – I get like there's a – it's probably her husband or something lives in the house too. It's just like we just ignore him. That's the other thing like Clifford kind of – yeah, yeah, whatever. We just ignore that. It's – he – Clifford's in charge and he's in charge of Amy. All right. That's a big thing. Okay. I can't believe we're going to go here next. <laughs> we are you're going to actually read two rabbits. Yeah. I've never read bunnies before, but they started talking to me in all the right. thread. So, so I was like, all right, let's do we it. Got, we got Lisa, Lisa B writes in. <laughs> yeah. And we got Gary and Archie. 
Uh, Gary is gonna is a white bunny. And I think Archie is like a gray grayish, right? <laughs> yeah. They're both rescues. Uh, they were getting along great. Then they took this. Then when when this pick was taken, they were getting along great. But now I have to keep them separate because they fight. Please help. Here's picks with their eyes better. Okay. I guess better open or something. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I have, I don't think I've ever read bunnies before, and and I don't have a bunny, and I don't really understand bunnies, but. Are bunnies like aggressive or something? No, like, do, are they bossy? I don't know. Like, because that's the first thing I get. So even before I read this, the white one with Archie, Archie was like really bossy. Like, that's the vibe that came through. Like, super bossy. Like, kind of reminds me of like the member, like a member of one of the Sopranos, like one of the cast. Like, I'm scared. Okay. I'm scared, okay. Archie. Okay. Like, Archie will will take you down if you cross him. And I feel like he's having a territorial issue with. Um, Gary here. Gary feels, I mean, according to Archie, a little passive aggressive. Like he doesn't know his, he's not staying in his bunny lane, you know? And, <laughs> and Archie's job is to be like, no, I don't okay. think so. And I do feel like Archie's a biter. And I feel like Gary knows how to play you, Lisa. And Gary looks like, oh, he's been mean to me again. But then he does things. He does things like eats things that he's not supposed to or step in God knows what part of whatever. You know, he's just not following Archie's rules. And Archie scares me. Archie feels like a bit of the aggressor. But, you know, Gary's a little, he's a little sneaky. He's a little passive aggressive. He knows what he's doing. He gets him going. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is what we've come to. <laughs> it's all come down to this. Yeah. Where, Archie's like where, where, Tony Soprano. We're talking about rabbits <laughs> being Tony Soprano. Like he could be cast like as a member of the Sopranos, okay. like Bunny Soprano. So you're saying like when you look at these two, I mean, I was getting the Ted Lasso show more. No, I get than, Italian than, mafia than vibes off, yeah, no, see, off Archie. Yeah, I was getting like Ted Lasso <laughs> and the assistant coach, <laughs> maybe Roy, the soccer player. <laughs> So you're getting surprised. I'm getting Ted Lasso. No, here. I'm getting like Archie's we're, like we're, driving down the New Jersey. What is that in the opening scene? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bought dri- myself a gun. <laughs> yeah, bought, bought, yeah. Stay your connected. Yeah, something yeah, like okay, that. Okay, all right. All yeah, right. we're getting punchy here. Bunnies, all right. okay. All right. Who's next? All right, so we got bunnies. We went there, people. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, Valerie <laughs> F. writes. This is two dogs here. Yes. On the left is my family. family's golden named Coda, and on the right is my staffy bull named Lydia that I adopted for my brother. Both have had a past of being attacked by other dogs and can be nervous or even lash out at dogs they don't know. Not sure if all this is fear-based reactions or not, but they get along fine together and are very affectionate and loving dogs. My family adores them. So okay. We, so we have Coda and Lydia. So they both lash out for different reasons. So here's the thing, like dogs don't hold past like we do it's something that they'll remember but they don't like carry i mean this is the way that i interpret it they don't always carry trauma they carry the leftover behaviors from trauma so when i look at coda coda to me feels more of like a victim so i just get coda being scared and nervous and i get coda being um like my right though this happens to make it like shadow pain my right front my right front paw my right my right arm is bugging me around the wrist, especially. So I wonder if that's like a sensitive area for her. She doesn't like being touched there or something because it's bugging me. And I get that she's more just, she doesn't like to be in, she needs to warm up to a space. Like you can't just throw her into a place because she's going to react. And I get almost like a loud vocalization she makes sometimes and a cowering and almost like you worrying about her hurting herself by the way that she moves when she's scared. So I get her being more reactive. And then what happens is if you stick other dogs around her and she's acting like that, what's going to happen? They're going to attack her because dogs don't like when other dogs don't act normal. They bite. Now, the other one, Lydia, Lydia's like very tough. And I feel like she doesn't know that she's a little dog. So I do get that her she has like a false bravo or a false confidence. So she will like pummel her way into new social situations with other dogs and try to assert her dominance like quickly. And again, the other dogs are like, no, you're not going to do that. That's impolite. And then, you know, she's going to get attacked. So for different reasons, I feel like dogs go after them because they probably, 
I mean, and they do look good with each other because Lydia feels, it's funny actually why they're good with each other because Lydia feels like she's allowed to feel in charge by Coda, who's kind of codependent or whatever. So Coda's like, whatever, you be in charge. And Lydia's like, that's right, I'm in charge. But they're both so, they're both like so insecure. <laughs> it's like, that's the problem is they're both so insecure. Coda might be more aware of her insecurity and Lydia's not aware of it at all. So other dogs who are aware of it will react the same way, which is like attacking them. So it sucks what ha- they probably were just never socialized correctly with other dogs because they were in a horrible situation and, and humans weren't watching out for them, which is terrible. And now this is just their leftover behaviors, but they are hysterical. They're, they're really funny. <laughs> okay. I don't know how you got all that, that photo. I mean, <laughs> and I'll post all these on the page. So hopefully owners have listened and they can respond and, and, and just kind of follow up with what I've said. All right. We have one more Emily in em, Emily Lynn Right. Louie would love a reading. It is a picture of a beautiful cat. Louie wants a reading. It's a beautiful, like, fluffy cat. He actually, yes, and Louie actually <laughs> asked. He did. He actually said <laughs> He to, looks like he's yeah. asking. Yeah, he's asking. Yeah. He does feel yeah. like he asks things. So I like Louie just because he's such a confident little cat, and he feels really smart, and I feel like... I wonder if there's another cat in the house or something. Um, he feels, like, a little superior only because... I get this, uh, sometimes cats, uh, cats are so funny. Louie's the type of cat who's very self-aware. So I feel like he knows who he is and he understands how the house works. And I feel like he's very close with Emily and him and Emily have like a, like a relationship where they're equal. And Louie's like, you know, you talk to me, I get it. I talk to you, you get it. I feel like there might be other pets in the house that don't because Louie has kind of a, a watcher vibe over everything. Um, what else am I getting with Louis? Louis feels like even though he's a cat, he would never, he doesn't feel it. I mean, he feels slightly playful, but he feels intelligent about it. So, you know, where some cats can get tricked, like we have a cat like Dusty, like some of our cats can get tricked by things, um, like the battery powered mouse. Like Louis's like, I'm totally aware. <laughs> like he doesn't like those toys. He, so he, he's not falling for that. He's not falling for that. Like he would rather go after the real things, like the actual mouse or the fly or something. He's not now he'll probably but I do get that he still will fall for like maybe the feather ball or something. But he's really too cool for school when it comes to cat toys. So I do get him being a little bit um superior, little elitist. Mm. He's kitty elite. He's a Hunter Stockton. He, if, of he was, cats. if he was a human, he'd be kind of like a, a green, maybe like a green blue aura, a bit of a foodie. Would he be a green koi or a blue koi? No, he'd be just straight up green blue. Okay. He'd be a bit of a foodie. Okay. okay. I think he'd be really into to that. You don't feel like he might put on a mermaid tail or dress up? <laughs> Not at all. In costume? No, but he wouldn't judge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. But he likes quality. I, you know, and he I, doesn't like to be belittled. Okay, <laughs> which I'm doing now is what you're saying. Yeah, he wouldn't be into that. He'd Louis stare right at now you. is upset. Yeah, he's upset with me. <laughs> he's he's too cool to be upset. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Perfect cat. All right. All right. So I think we threw a lot at you today. Yeah, we did. We, I think we pretty much answered every question you could have possibly had. It was a lot. We got through all these different aura combos. Yeah. We, we you know we 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 filled it. We did. We did. So thank you so much. You know, this podcast is for you and about you. And we're so glad that you spent some time with us today. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.